What's going on everyone, Mike here and in this video we're going to have a look at the Asus X555 series. We actually have two X555 models here, as Asus will offer the laptops in this family in a couple of different configurations and either with a plastic case available in a few colors or a dark blue metallic option. Choosing one over the other is mostly a matter of personal taste and somewhat a matter of budget, as the aluminum covered models will be slightly more expensive and only bundle higher end hardware. But except for a few configuration differences, the two variants share most of their features and traits. This X555 laptop started about 500 euros over here, or 500 dollars in the US, and that puts them in the affordable notebooks category. They do pack Intel Haswell hardware, but some corners were cut in order to meet the lower price point. For example, there are only HD screens with TN panels on these computers, there's no backlit keyboard and there's only an average sized battery. But even so, the overall package isn't bad at all. Both laptops look alright and are fairly well made. The plastic version comes with a textured lid cover and a silver interior visually cut in two distinct halves. The palm rests with a brush finishing and the area around the keyboard with a slightly different texture. The metallic version feels more premium and stronger, as it won't flex as easily as the plastic model, but at the same time the aluminum hood shows smudges and finger oil. The interior is cast from a single piece of smooth metal which also stretches around the edges. This aside, the two X555s share the same hinge design, the same matte plastic bezel around the display and the same underbellies. Unlike the previous X550 laptops though, these ones only offer quick access to the memory module and not the hard drive, while the battery is no longer removable and the cooling solution no longer blows hotter towards the left side, but through the grills hidden behind the display's hinge as we've seen on some higher end Asus laptops before. We'll talk about that a bit later. For now let's have a look at the I.O. There's the PSU, the LAN adapter, VGA and HDMI outputs, two USB 3.0 ports and a Kensington lock on the left edge, plus an optical drive, a USB 2.0 slot, the microphone headphone jack and the card reader on the right. Or in other words, pretty much everything you should expect from a mainstream 15 inch laptop. You also get a few discrete status LEDs on the front lip and the webcam on top of the displays. Speaking of those, I was definitely not expecting much from these laptops in terms of screen quality, but even so, I was a bit disappointed with Asus's choice of panels. They're not very bright and they also suffer from very poor contrast, on top of the narrow viewing angles associated with cheap TN panels. In everyday use, as long as you're not picky and look at these screens head on, you'll probably find them, well, alright. And they are, but could have been better, especially since most other manufacturers offer higher end panels on their affordable 15 inchers these days. I'll tell you more about these screens in the written review available on tlbhd.com, it's the first link in the description. Anyway, let's move on. There's not a lot to complain about the keyboard and the trackpad. Both models feature the same key layout and design with a numpad area and rather cramped directional keys, a layout we've seen on many other Asus laptops before. There's no backlighting system, and the actual keys do feel somewhat cheap, plasticky, but overall I'd say the typing experience on these X555s is ok. It's worth noting though that the plastic model does flex a lot more than the metallic version, which can steer you towards this side. The trackpads are identical in size, but actually feel different. The one on the metallic X555 is smoother and is surrounded by a nice beveled edge, but is quite noisy when it comes to registering taps and physical clicks, while the one on the plastic model feels somewhat harsher, but is quieter. Both perform well in everyday use though, responding fast and accurate to my swipes, gestures and taps, so I'd say you should be happy with either variant. Hardware-wise, Asus plans to offer these laptops in a more than a dozen different configurations, with either Core i3, i5 or even i7 Haswell processors, 4-8GB of RAM, 500GB or 1TB hard drives and options for Nvidia GT820 or 840 graphics or no dedicated graphics at all. They'll range from about $500 for the cheapest configurations up to roughly $800 to $850 for the top options. We do have two different models here, one with a Core i3 and another with a Core i5 CPU, both with Nvidia 820M graphics, and I've put them to test in order to see how they fare with everyday tasks, how well they score in benchmarks, how well they handle video content and how well they can run some modern games. It's difficult to include all these details in the clip though, but you can read my detailed impressions and results in the written post on tlbhd.com. I will however add that these two run fairly cool and quiet even under load. Hot air is blown out through the grills behind the hinge towards the screen, and even if the Core i5 model does reach somewhat higher body temperatures, there's not much to worry about in daily use. You'll also hear the fan inside when running games, but the speakers are actually loud enough to cover it easily, 
In fact, they are quite punchy, although the sound coming out of them is mostly average. In fact, that's how you could probably summarize Asus's X555 line. Average. These laptops are not the cheapest in their category or the fastest, and they don't even pack the best features. But so far they do check most of the right boxes. There is however one more thing I don't like. Asus put a 37Wh battery on these machines, which only translates in about 4 hours of daily use, which is meh. And the battery is no longer removable like on the older versions, and I believe that's going to bother a fair share of potential buyers. So at the end of the day, I'm having a hard time drawing the line on these laptops. On one side there's the metallic option, which is a novelty in the X500 line, but at the same time closely priced to the slimmer VivoBook V551 or the more versatile TransformerBook Flip TP500 series. On the other there are the plastic models, whose only major selling point are the colorful cases. But these are more expensive than some of the other similarly configured Asus laptops, like a few of the X550 or the X552 models, like the removable batteries and even pack poorer displays. And then there are also the competitors to consider. Acer, Lenovo, HP are just some of the other manufacturers who offer good laptops for around $500 these days. So in conclusion, these Asus X555 models aren't bad. In fact, there's nothing majorly wrong with them, and for the right price, they could be worth buying. But I'm just not impressed. Anyway, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, and make sure to check out the detailed review on tlbhd.com for more details on these laptops. Catch you later.